Hi everybody and welcome to this video on the intensity of emotions in terms of subjective feelings. So this is going to be extremely helpful for exam revision, so let's get started. So, as we know, subjective feelings is one of the components that make up emotions. So we need to look at emotions and subjective feelings in a little bit more detail in terms of the intensity of it. So, as we know, subjective feelings are the way we interpret an event or an experience. Our beliefs and expectations about the event will all combine to influence our subjective feeling associated with emotional response. So what that means is everyone is different, so we're all going to have different experiences, beliefs and expectations regarding how we feel emotions, what makes us happy, what makes us unhappy, what we're afraid of, etc. That's all unique to the individual. So individuals will experience a similar range of emotions, like I talked about in my previous video. Everyone will experience the basic five, at least, and several others, obviously. But people can often differ in the intensity of their emotional experience. So that's what this video is really focusing on, is looking at the intensity and how we measure the intensity of emotions uh, in psychology. So let's look at this in more detail. So people with mental illnesses may experience emotions differently. So people who have been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder often have very, very intense emotions, especially anger and sadness. So much more intense than would be typical with people that do not have pers a borderline personality disorder. So subjective feelings or the intensity of them are often represented and measured using a continuum or in other words, a type of rating scale. So here's the example that we went through in class, but let's just go over it again for revision purposes. So this is the basic emotion of anger, but often it's not enough to just describe or interpret someone as feeling angry. Okay, we need to look at the intensity of their anger in order for us to be accurate in our diagnosis and our observations. So here we can see the intensity of anger from low intensity to high intensity. So it's a continuum or a scale representing anger on a scale. All right, so we've got low intensity words for anger. So starting with our annoyed and frustrated, our mid range, which is mad and angry, and then our high intensity anger, which is furious and enraged. So we can all agree that feeling enraged is very different to just feeling mildly annoyed. It's the same emotion, but very different intensities. This will then obviously have a huge effect, not only on our subjective feeling regarding the situation, but also our physiological responses and our expressive behaviors. So in other words, when we are mildly annoyed, we will have a slight increase in our physiological responses, but when we're enraged, our physiological responses will be dramatically higher. So much higher heart rate, much higher blood pressure, very red in the face, increased temperature, etc. So again, same emotion, but very, very different in intensity. So rating scales are a type of self-report data. So in other words, participants make their own reports on their feelings. So it will be similar if I just go back for a moment to what we see here. So, you know, people may be asked to circle or rate whereabouts they feel regarding that particular event or, you know, how they're feeling at that particular time. Sometimes it'll be a different scale. So a scale of one to 10. So one being not mad at all through 10 being absolutely furious and enraged, but it's all the same type of method. So it is a subjective method of measuring the intensity of one's emotion. Now it's important to note as well, just before we finish with this video, that these may not always be accurate. So someone may lie about the true indication of the intensity of the emotion that they're feeling at the time. Every person is also different in rating their emotions. So my own interpretation of mad may be somebody else's furious or someone else's annoyed might be someone else's furious, for example. So it's subject not only to the emotion itself and how the person is experiencing it, but how they interpret these words and the intensity of them. And people also, again, like I said before, deny or lie their emotions or refuse to reveal them. So they may be very, very angry, but their expressive behaviors or the scale that they've been asked to complete, they may say that they're not annoyed at all, or they're only very mildly annoyed when that's obviously not the case. So it's important to remember that rating scales in terms of subjective feelings are not always going to be valid or reliable ways of measuring someone's subjective feelings. Okay, everybody, that does it for this revision video. If you have any questions, obviously you know what to do. Email me or see me in class. Otherwise, happy revising.